Hey folks, Mule Fitness. Thank you for buying my book. And if you haven't bought my book again, it's on Amazon. Uh, we're here again with Juan. Juan's gonna help us today. And now we're getting pretty far along in the red program. And we're both wearing our red shirts yet again. Uh, and this is uh, eccentric training, elastic training, and tensegrity training. A lot of words. So let's kind of demonstrate what that is. Now, uh, I can have Juan, go, so from here Juan, go ahead, and I just want you to step up on this bench, and step on down, and step up again, and now keep on going Juan, and now we're in the world of these group X instructors, right? We're doing a bench routine, and, uh, and then all of you who want more work, you're gonna get higher and higher benches, and you're gonna blow out your client's knees if you get above about 12 inches, so don't do that. Quit doing that, okay? If you wanna do a good bench routine, go back to the farm as we did, okay? So Juan's doing this, okay? Is that a hard, one? Pretty easy. Pretty easy, okay, my friend. Stop. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Juan get up on this bench, and he's gonna face you guys in camera. Now, Juan is in high school again, and he has a girlfriend that he wants to sneak out of the house at night so his parents won't hear him leave the house. So I'm gonna have him sneak down the step, and Juan, that next step is gonna creak. So my friend, you gotta land on that step really, really softly. So what I want you to do is step down this step, and as slow as you can, slow as you can, and don't let that foot clomp on the step where your parents are gonna hear you leave the house. Your, your parents are gonna leave the house. No! Oh, oh, he did it! Oh my God, look at that. Juan, was that hard? That was difficult, very difficult. That was very difficult. So that is eccentric training. So we're lengthening the fiber under load, and I love this demonstration, and I talk about it in the book. So try the other leg, Juan. This is kind of warm up here. And so the idea now is that when you load, all of his body weight is on one leg, and there's an increased load, about 20%. So not only does his body have to take all the weight, his leg has to take all the weight of his body, then we increase that weight by about 20% because of internal friction and things like that that are going on with eccentric training, and we can see how effective it is. So if I do things like have a count of maybe six, you know, one do like a count of six going down each step, on a single leg, wow, that is effective eccentric training, okay? Now, the next demonstration in this section is elastic training. Now, we're gonna beat ourselves silly with your middle finger. So one, as hard as you can, with all that strength in your forearm, you beat that chest. Boy, not a lot of force, is it? And that's all the strength in that muscle. Now, I want you to take this finger. I want you to pull it back like a mouse trap, and now, boom! Mm. How much, we can hear that now. So how much more energy can we produce if we ac access the elastic potential of the muscle tissue? So now we're talking about the fascia, the myofascia. So it's just not the muscle, the myo, but here's the fascia, boom! And I can really now upregulate and get produce power for sports and train in a whole different way. Uh, and we're not gonna talk about tensegrity yet, but that's um, structural tension, and the idea here is if my muscle is a big fan muscle, so Juan's muscle attaches here from his pec, and we have all these fan fibers, the idea is we wanna upregulate all the fibers of the fan. So we need to work out in clever ways to do that. So I've talked a lot here, sorry about that, but I hope I got some cool ideas in. Now let's put them to use. Single leg squat. Oh, these are fun. Especially when we have a bench that's kind of, you know, standard gym bench. Just one's like kind of on the low side, which is good. So it's gonna be harder, Juan. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna have Juan do is I'm gonna have him stand facing away from the bench and I'm going to give him a dowel at first <clears throat> because this is going to be kind of hard. And so what Juan's going to do is he's going to go ahead and put out a leg. So 
And then he's going to be kind of look, let's move back towards the bench a little bit, Juan. So Juan's never done any of this stuff, folks, so this is kind of interesting. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to have Juan, on a count of six, very softly sit down on this bench. So we want that biscuit to kiss that bench, and then he's going to pop up on a count of one. Okay, Juan? That's the goal. Here we go. So we're going to go six, five, four, three, two, and one, five. So it's hard down there, right? Three, two, one are really hard. Let's try it again. And you got to you got to sit down. It's okay to sit down. It's okay to sit down. Six, five, four, three. Ooh, wow, look at that, folks. Let's try it again, my friend. Killer, right? It is. Here we go. And the Dallas for a little balance here. First, six, five, four, three, two. Now you should be seated. And then he pops up on one. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and up. That's our third one, right one? Yes. We're gonna do six. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pop up. I'm gonna take the dowel away from him now. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. He's got your last two, right? Let's see if we can do this. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pop up. Killer, killer. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pop up. Walk it out. How's that leg? Tough. Okay, good. So what we're gonna have to do the other leg now, folks, since this is so good. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give one a little bit of a workout. And again, his first score, he can use a dowel because he's learning it, and then his last two, he's really gonna go for it. And again, so it's six reps with a six count, right? We go down for six, we just kiss the bench, and then we pop up. So you can stay down there a little longer, Juan, when you, once you hit that bench, right? Okay. Here we go. And six, five, four, three, two, one, and then he can stand up, good. Six, five, four, three, two, one, up. Six, five, four, three, two, one, ah, this is number four, right? Yeah. Six, five, four, three, whew, let's try that again. Six, five, four, three, two, one, pop up. Okay, Juan, here you go. Big boy time, big girl time. Here we go, folks, you at home. And we're gonna try it again. And we're down for six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on up. And here's the sixth time, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, that was a flop, wasn't it? <laughs> that was pretty ugly. Anyway, you can see how hard that is, folks. So again, we're really in advanced training and we're really going for strength now, which is typically below six reps. So good job, Bob. Thank you. Decline push-ups. So we're gonna have one put his feet on the bench. He's gonna be out, hands on the floor, out towards camera here. And what's that deal again, folks? We wanted to go down on a count of six, didn't we? So we're gonna have one go down on a count of six, but this time when he gets down to death, I'm gonna have him pulse for six, and then he's gonna pop up on a count of one. Ready, one, here we go. So now it's six, five, four, three, two, one, and now he's gonna pulse. No, he's gonna pulse down there. Pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, and now he's gonna pop up on a count of one. That's his thing, okay? Five more of those. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, and now pop up on one. That's two. Here we go, one, six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, now pop up. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, and now pop up. 
How many more you got there, Juan? Seven. No. How many more do you want to do? Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, and now pop up. Let's call this six. I don't know if this is five or six, folks. Uh. Oh, he's done. He's cooked. So you can see within six reps, we can fail out. So all you bodybuilders out there that are spending hours and hours in a gym, if you do this sort of stuff, you can get out of the gym, tear the muscle down, build it up stronger and bigger in only about 40 minutes. Because look at that, That's, this is an efficient, effective workout. Assisted pull-up. So we're gonna have one go pretty heavy here. So we're gonna think about what weight you would use for like a, maybe an eight rep max or something. Uh, so we're gonna give him maybe two plates counterweight to his weight. So uh, we wanna try to get as heavy as we can and be able to do it, okay? So I'm gonna have Juan come on up and he's gonna come up and pull himself up into a pull up. And again, what's he gonna do? He's gonna lower on a count of six, right? So he's gonna do a very, very slow, 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 slow to a full dead hang. Pull himself up have the chin clear the bar, hold it there for like a good one second one, and then we're gonna come on down. And hopefully the weight's heavy enough where he's gonna fatigue out in about six reps or so, more or less, let's see. Good luck, Juan, here we go. So pull up, hold it there, chin above, chin above the bar, and now six, five, four, three, two, one, full hang, and then boom, pull up, hold it over there, chin over the bar. Six, five, four, three, two, one, full hang, pull it up, hold it for a count of one. Now six, five, four, three, two, one, pull it up and hold. Is that four? four. Six, five, four, three, two, one, pull it up and hold. Is his chin over that bar, folks? Is it over the bar? Six, five, four, Three, two, one, full hang. And here it is, one. Pull it up and hold it, hold it, hold it. And now it's six, five, four, three, two, one, full hang. Step off. Have a good day. Nice work. So, how was that? That was hard? Difficult, yeah. Very difficult. Uh, kind of almost near maximal effort for those six, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So, we can see him that he was really trying to, you know, almost compensating, but he was fighting it and he was getting it. Good job. Machine press, simple, we do it. We're doing three sets of 12 and all this sort of stuff. Now we're gonna see if we can get one. Pretty fatigued and again, six reps. You're gonna see this pattern again and again, folks. So now one's gonna sit down and he's gonna put a load for him. Again, he's gonna look for like a, a, around an eight rep max load that he would do for himself. So we're gonna go a little heavy one on the heavier side. So it's the same thing. So Juan's gonna, uh, he can start with his feet and push the thing out first. So I don't want too much strain on the shoulders here. Now, there's a springy point back here where he's gonna feel that spring. And in that spring, he's gonna lower it for a count of six. When he feels that springy point back in here, he's then gonna pulse it for six. And then he's gonna pop it out for one. Here we go, Juan. So it's six, five, four, three, two, one, find that springy point, pal, and it's six. It's two, three, four, five, and they're very small, and now pop out. That's, that's your first rep, folks. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and it's pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, and pop out. That's two. Here it is, six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse, two, three, four, five, six, and boom! He's halfway now, isn't he, folks? Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse, two, three, four, five, six, pop out, boom, four, he's got two left, six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse, two, three, four, 
five, six, and pop out. And here it is, here is six. We can see the strain on its face, folks. You should be straining too. Strain with one, strain with one, work out one, get stronger with one. Two, three, four, five, six, and boom! He's done, he's cooked. <laughs> Lat pull down. Gee, what's our sequence again, folks? We're gonna pull down for a count of six, and Juan's gonna hold it, clear it, and he's gonna uh, release it on a count of one. Um, and then we're gonna show a little trick at the end here. Okay, so I'm gonna have Juan do, again, we would do six reps of this. So again, Juan's gonna pick a weight that he would maybe do like an eight rep max. Okay, and then he's gonna go ahead and he's gonna pull down on a slow count of six. No, actually he's gonna pull down on a count of one, isn't he folks? He's gonna pull down on a count of one, so pull down and hold it one, and now it's six, five, four, three, two, one, and a full release. And now pull down, hold, clear the chin over the bar, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Pull it down, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. This is four, right, Juan? So here, pull it down, pull and hold, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take a little rest here. And normally we would do two more of these reps, right, folks? Okay, I'm gonna give one a little variation here. So go ahead and release that fully one. So now what I'm gonna have him do is um, double the load on this arm. Who says we can't do that, right? So another variation, folks, and I'll just demonstrate for one, is that I can pull down, so I'm gonna use his weight that he used for two arms. I'm gonna use it for one, but I'm gonna help this arm come down. Here we go, boom. And now I'm gonna try to release this really slow. So I'm using that weight again of yours, but it's now doubled, right? I mean, I'm, the whole weight is on one arm as I release it. And then if I need help, I can pull it down with the other arm, but then I try to release it on that slow eccentric, all right? So there we have it. Come on, give it a shot. And I'm gonna have him do his last two reps of this six. So now he's gonna pull down with one arm, Hold it, and now he's gonna release for six, five, four. So hopefully it's harder, right? So we've doubled the amount of weight here on the one arm. So this is another way to do it, folks. The idea is to really load up, so we're really tearing that muscle uh, on these reps. It, the muscle's really micro-tearing under this stretching load, okay? Good one. Let's do the other arm just for a demonstration. All right. And we're going to let him release that now. So, Juan, I'm going to play with you a little bit. Stay right there, Pat. So, I'm going to unload him up. Got three, four more plates. How about that? So he's got to really pull that thing down. Now try it. So now he's got to really pull that thing down. So you need to fight it. It has to be so hard you fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. And then it's too heavy of a weight for two arms to pull down. I mean for one arm, so he uses this other arm to help pull it down. And there we go. So that's how we can do this and really get the maximum effort. And on that last exercise we did one where you're working on the bench press, uh, it said it beat up your, your chest, didn't it? It yeah. felt like it really beat up his chest. So when you finish these folks, it should feel like that muscle really worked and maybe had this micro tearing that we want. And then it's gonna take you maybe two, three days to uh, heal from that. Or you should be sore, you know, definitely sore about two days after the workout, even three into the fourth day. If you're sore more than four days, you've done too much, back off, you're in Papa Bear world, but we're pushing these limits now. So. Be careful.
Okay, folks, machine row, eccentric. What's that rhythm again? He's gonna pull back on a count of one, he's gonna hold it, and he's gonna slowly release on a count of six. Now, the idea for this, folks, is if you do six reps at a six, zero, one count, you only need to do one set. That's the idea, it's very efficient. You can get in and out of a gym, tear down the muscle, get strong, get out of there, and not spend three, four, five sets. Bodybuilders even get up to like up to 10 sets because they really want that hypertrophy and there's a correlation to number of sets. But here we're getting real strong, real fast, real efficient. So again, we're gonna have Juan put on a pretty heavy weight there. And let's check out that seat, Juan, is it high enough? Let's put it all the way up to the top. <clears throat> He's gonna pull it in and he's really gonna see if he can load up here a little bit and again he's gonna pull in and hold and I want to, want to have fixing maybe a five degree layback here he doesn't really need this pad but the pad is a nice place to as a gauge to pull it past so I want him to pull that handle past that pad and pull it all the way in so go ahead one pull it all the way in and now he's gonna hold it there and now he lets out very slowly for six five four, three, two, one, pull in and hold. Oh, I like that hold in there, folks. I like that little pause where you kind of stick that landing, get the momentum out of that pull, and that single pull, get the momentum out, hold it, earn that contraction. And now we're doing real slow. So again, this should be hard enough for six reps at this six count, I call it. Should be good for one set and you should be pretty cooked after that. And if it's not, you need to increase the weight so we can see he's beginning to compensate here. See it's kind of bouncing and he really can't hold it far back. Can you hold it one? There you go. That's hard, right? That's what you want. That's what you want. Is this number five or so? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> you just do it till you really don't want to do any more. Till everything burns, you don't want to do any more. So is it six reps? Is it five? Is it eight? Yeah, yeah it's something like that, right? Good. We're done. I think that was six. Yeah. All right, contralateral Bulgarians. Uh, we've done these. So what does that mean? That means that the weight is going to be on the other side of the standing leg. So Juan is going to, he's got a, a pretty heavy uh, dumbbell here. We're going to go as heavy as you can, folks. Again, we're only going to do six reps, right? How hard can it be? <laughs> uh, okay, Juan, here we go, my friend. So he's going to get into a uh, Bulgarian, he's going to use the bench here, put his back foot on there. Notice that this is his right leg is his standing leg, and yet the weight is over on his left side. That means contralateral, that's what we want. So I'm going to have one go down very slowly on a count of six. So here we go, one, six, five, four, three, two, one. And he's going to pulse, two, three, four, five, Six, he's gonna hold it and then pop up on a count of one. That's one rep. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And pulse. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold it down there and now pop up. That's two. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And pulse. Two. Three, four, five, six, and he's gonna pop up. He's only halfway, folks, halfway. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, hold it down and pop up. Damn, two more. Yeah, see that's burning. And see he's kind of wobbling all that? That's because the weight's over on this side and this hip has really got to work and it's burning, right Juan? Yep. Good, thanks for pounding that glute. Six, five, four, three, two, one. He's low and it's pulse. Two, three, four, five, six. He's gonna hold it down there, pop up. Six, five, four, three, two, one and pulse, two, three, four, five, six, and come on up. Five or six. Is that five or six? Who cares? 
<laughs> Who cares? It's enough, right? Okay, we think it was six. We'll count it out, you know, if we get in post-production here. Pretty sure it was six. <laughs> Pretty sure it was six. So that's the idea, folks. Um, of course, we would do the other leg. Uh, the only couple things that I would, I would uh, uh, maybe cue one on is that his back foot, he had his toe down. His toe was flat. I don't know if you can see that back there. I like, I like the back toe not to be flat, but to be, you know, bend that big toe joint, right? I like to bend the big toe joint, number one. That's very important with sports. Um, and then after I bend that big toe joint, I would have, he was really kind of hinged forward. I would have him maybe go more vertical and then go straight down and he's going to get a bigger stretch in this quad, the back quad. And then when he's down there, then he does his pulses, three, four, five, six. You get the picture, folks. And then you power back up, boom. So that just have his mechanics just a little more, more clean in there. But you get the idea. Have fun with it. Get strong. Machine leg press. All right, we've seen these machines. You've used them. Now let's use them um, a little more effectively. So the first thing, uh, again, we have our yellow adjustment and our pin. So we're gonna have Juan get in there. We want him pretty deep in the bucket here, which means that we want a pretty uh, good knee angle. And why do we want that? Um, is because we wanna load up the glutes. So if you have a shallow knee angle, uh, then you can you know, push a lot of weight. You really can. You see people do that all the time in just real shallow knee angle and their quads are working and these very really shallow uh, angles. But we want it a little deeper in that angle so those glutes and those hams wrap around and that adductor magnus and a bunch of stuff has to work. So let's get in here, Juan. Let's find out where our deep in the bucket is for you. Okay. Now the first thing, uh, we want the top of his toe kind of at the knee or above the knee. So put your feet all the way down, Juan. So now we can see that, you know, the toes are below the knee. We don't want that. We want to protect that knee because we're gonna be putting some big loads here, folks. So we want those feet fairly high. So go ahead and adjust that seat, Juan, and find a point where we have a more than 90 degrees. So it's, we're actually less than 90 degrees, so keep on going. And he's gonna feel a springy point in his groin area, right in there. Okay, so there it is. So Juan's pretty deep in the bucket here, and I actually like counting how many holes he has, or you know where he is. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's in there, so we can repeat it. So he's pretty deep here. Uh, yeah, for the first time he's doing this, let's just start right there. So again, Juan, give me a load on this that you can do maybe, uh, maybe just you know eight, ten times. So give me a good heavy load here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push back on a count of one, right? So we're gonna do that. Okay, so push back on a count of one. And here he is. So it's six, five, four, three, two, one. And that depth, he's, he's gonna now pulse it. He's gonna pulse it now for me. So it's pulse, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it, and now push back. And I want him just to like almost tap, almost tap that weight, right? So it's really low in there. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And now we just, he's kissing. He's kissing that weight down there. That's where it is for his six. And then he's going to hold it. And then he's going to push back. So we always have load on there. Never, not any load. Here we go. Six, five. That's our third one. Four. Five, six, here we are, and it's pulse, two, three, four, five, six. We hold it, and then we push back. That's three, right? Six, five, four. Again, it's one set of six, folks, should do it. And if, if, you, if you're not really burning out, the idea is to really burn out. And if you're not burning out, keep on going until you do burn out. But hopefully if you do it right with enough load, the proper load, you should burn out in about six reps. Idea is to get efficient, get strong, get back out of here. And he pushes back. What's that, four or five? That was five. Five. So he's going real slow, real slow. He's sneaking up on it and he's at depth and he plays with it. 
and maybe not make any noise at all, just have it just hang down there and push his back and get out of there and he should be cooked. And if he wasn't, we're gonna put load him up more <laughs> next time. All right, serratus pull-ups. The idea is the serratus muscle, we'll have Juan kind of be here. So the serratus muscles kind of interdigitate into the ribs. They tie into the opposite hip here through the uh, abs and obliques. And they make this big ribbon around the body. And the shoulder blades are attached to it, so we're gonna turn them around. So the serratus uh, kind of runs under here. The shoulder blades are attached to it. Then we have the rhomboids coming across and the shoulder blades are attached to it. And then the serratus comes around and then it comes around from this part of them and it goes into this hip. So that's a really good, powerful muscle and it supports the shoulders and it gets a strong kind of on the inside. So we're gonna focus on that and we're gonna get one up here. Uh, we're gonna give him a little more help than last time. And so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna have him come on up. We're gonna have him get into a really kind of wide grip here uh, and then the idea is we're only going to do push-ups, I mean pull-ups from the bottom half, right? So he's going to hang and he's just going to pull up about halfway up. And, and the shoulder blades are going to rotate in. And there's going to be a lot of cool movement going on there. So that serratus muscle has to work preferentially. Uh, so it's not the lat muscle to pull us all the way up with the biceps. It's really the serratus, only in the bottom half of, of the uh, Pull up. So he's gonna have Juan's gonna get up here, it's assisted. But it's still a pretty good load for him. I have a real wide grip here for him. And he's gonna come on down, he's just gonna hang. And now we're just gonna have him pull up. So pull up one about halfway up. There. And then come on down. And I'm gonna kind of pretend my hands are his scapula, folks. So here they are, you know, they're kind of coming up and pull up one. And then come on down. So we can see we're getting this cool motion here in these scaps. And it's kind of hard, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely hard. It's not like a regular pull-up, but we're really working deep, deep in these kind of connection muscles where uh, the scaps are kind of sewn into the body that wrap around this big sports sling, the serratus sling that goes around the body. And um, I really like developing that. So again, Juan's holding up there for a couple seconds and he's just kind of slowly going up, slowly going down. We're not really counting this. We're just having him really go till he didn't really want to go anymore. And again, but that should be about six reps or eight reps, right? I think so. Yeah, so about six or eight reps uh, should do it, folks. Um, and uh, one set, maybe two set max, and you'll be good to go on that. So that's a straight as sling. Um, and then, uh, for a bonus, which is not in the book, uh, then we're gonna cut and we're gonna show you another variation where I like to, again, get that serratus going. All right, folks, this is bonus footage for the serratus muscle. Uh, we just did saw Juan do a serratus pull up, and you ever notice on the machines, they show you what muscle is working for the pull up muscle, and it always shows uh, the back of the muscle, right? It shows this big lat muscle coming up and it wraps under here and then it wraps under the arm and it attaches right here to the front of the body, right? We see that. And so when I do a pull up, um, they always talk about that lat muscle pulling up, right? Is the pec working? They don't show it, do they? On most machines, they don't do it. Uh, anyway, uh, if I have, if, if I, if I pull up, you know, is this pec working? Heck yes. Heck yes. That pec is working. Where does the pec tie into? The same place that the lat ties into. So the pec ties into here in the front of the arm and the lat goes under the arm and ties into the same place the intertubercular sulcus area, right? So it attaches that little groove thing right there. So these muscles, think of the swimmers and you know uh, people that produce power pulling down. 
And then, so, and the serratus muscles are involved with that too. So we got the lat muscles, we got the pec muscles, we got the serratus muscles, and then, oh, lo and behold, there's one head of the tricep that crosses into the scap. So there's a lot of deep stuff going on here. It looks like a pretty straightforward, simple exercise. However, uh, I like it because it really ramps up that serratus and it kind of ties in all the muscles that you would do like in a pull-up. And we actually can develop the pecs and the triceps and the serratus. And I'm just yabbering on here. Let's go ahead and just see what it's like. So what am I gonna do? And I'll just put it maybe on a, a little low, but that's too much. So what I'm gonna do, folks, is I'm gonna hinge over, and my arms are straight, straight overhead. I'm gonna hinge over at 45 degrees, and I just pull down with straight arms, and then I just lower it again, okay? Arms overhead, and I pull down. And so I'm working all that good stuff, pecs, lats, serratus, one head of the try. Just give it a shot, Juan. See how it feels for you. So he's hinged it at about a about 45 there. He's going to pull this arc through about 135 degrees of motion as he pulls it with his shoulders. Go ahead, pull it down. Boom. And he lowers it, releases it, and he pulls it down. So. Working, see Juan working here. Those lats are working, those lats are working, the pecs are working. He's got one head of the tricep here that's crossing into his shoulder blade there. That's working. These serratuses are working. How you feeling, Juan? Pretty good. So it's a lot of work here. I like it. It's a lot of, uh, I don't know, just connection, coordination of all the muscles to work as a concerted effort here. And again, um, you know, here I'd maybe just do three sets of eight, three sets of 10, three sets of 12. Uh, I kind of like to work it that way. But anyway, you get it. So I give you serratus pull-ups and now this is another way we can really ramp that serratus up for you athletes. Four square push-ups. All right, folks, now we're getting into the world of uh, changing um, the elastic potential of our muscles, and we mentioned before how Juan's pec muscle, um, you know, goes into a lot of different fibers, and so we want to upregulate the entire fan of the fiber uh, to get them strong through these different positions and ranges of motion. Because if I'm on a sports field, boom, or I'm on MMA, you know, I don't know where this pec muscle has got to go. Right? It can go anywhere. So let's go ahead and do that. So the idea is that one hand is gonna go and do a push-up in each of the four squares. So like, I don't know, we we're kids, we played four square. I don't even remember that game. But anyway, I went four square, so here we have it. So Juan's gonna get into a push-up position here. His left hand is gonna be stationary, and his right hand is gonna travel around the four square, okay? So here we go, Juan, we're just gonna do push-ups and you're going to do probably three sets of four as you go around the square, okay? Here we go. Do a push-up here. Now he's going to put a hand in that square. Do a push-up for me. Put a hand over there. Do a push-up for me. Put a hand there. Do a push-up for me. Put a hand there. So that's round one. Keep on going one. And now do two more rounds of that. Boom. Boom. Boom, and I like the fact he's getting springy here. I love that, I love that spring. He's finding the spring in his chest, and he's finding that spring, and he's pushing these different patterns. And that was beautiful, my friend. Rest. Now we're gonna see him do the other side. But he's a little tired now, right? So we need to give him a little bit of uh, rest. So now, his right hand was traveling, now his left hand is gonna travel. And here we go. And he's going around the square. And Juan's got good, pretty good, strong pec muscles here. He's demonstrating good push-up strength. And he's got that kind of springiness at the bottom of the throw of his push-ups. And he's regulating that arm all around. Boom, I love it. Nice job, my friend. Thank you. 
quick elastic assisted dips. So the idea is that I'm not worried about a full range of motion. My whole book I'm talking about full range of motion, full range of motion, but we know for like you uh, high jumpers or people that might be in volleyball or something, you do these quarter squats and that's where you get your plyometric strength. And we did the uh, demonstration where I'm using the elastic potential of my fascia to actually produce the power. So here I want to train the elastic uh, potential of the fascia. That's what we're going for here. So I'm going to give one a, um, a load that's, you know, not too heavy because um, I want him to be able to, to spring. And, and when he goes down, he's going to feel a natural stop point. So do this kind of one. Feel a natural stop point in your chest. And that's a springy point. Or I can do it this way, folks. Put your hand uh, out in front of you. Put your hand in your pec here. And as you come back, your pec is going to pop up into your hand. Boom. So that's, that's mine. So you feel it kind of pop up into your hand. And that's where that springy point of your pec is going to be. So on for here, when you're doing dips, you're going to find that kind of nice springy point, And you don't want to go through that. Okay? So let's step on up. And the idea is doing quick and springy and very elastic. And we're probably, only going to probably do uh, just maybe the top half of the, of, the, of the lift here. So he's going to find that springy point. Boom. And quicker. He's going to find that spring. Find the spring. Find the spring. So it's about power production. Rate of uh, force production now is important. Uh, we're the opposite of our eccentric, right? Which we're slow. Now we want Juan to really just kind of feel and upregulate the elastic potential. So we got strong in the eccentric, and now on the elastic side, we're getting the uh, connective tissue going. Okay? And that's all it is. Um, the only little correction I would give Juan there is his head's, you know, kind of forward all the time here. You know, let's try to keep all that nice stuff in a line. Let's just do it again, Juan. Good. This looks better. Uh, I hate that animal at the watering hole look, you know, where the neck is always, you know, jutting out forward. We see that with a lot of our, our weightlifters. We don't like that. So anyway, so that's the idea. A little bit better body mechanics, everyone. Thank you. And quick assisted dips for that elastic potential. Boo! Where that ball? Quick elastic pull-ups. Again, one. We're only going for that, that top half. We're going to keeping it that's the top half and just find that spring, that boom. And, you're, and again, we've given one a little bit of uh, taking the load off a little bit. We don't want too much load on this because you get into strength world when you do that. We want to keep it in the elastic world. So here we go, Juan. We're going to get up there and we're going to keep it at the top half of our pull up. And again, we're going to, he's going to find that kind of nice spring point where you can just kind of get a rhythm going. And there it is. So he's finding the rhythm, finding that spring, finding the spring, finding the spring. And again, we're not going all the way down. We're just kind of keeping it at the top half there. Really effective. Trying to produce some velocity, some force. Boom. Like a little pogo stick or something. Good. And about how many did you do on that? About 15. About 15, yeah. So you're going to find that you're going to do, uh, if the weight's right, you can do about 12 or 15 of those. Okay, so that's the exact right number, and I'm glad you came up with that number. I made it up. Like yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't prop you on that. <laughs> Oval tensegrity pull-ups. Uh, another concept here, folks. Now we're we've done eccentric, we've done elastic, but now I kind of want to get um, the whole three-dimensional structure of my body and. Uh, playing with that through space. So we can certainly pull up, but what if I had one shift over, pull up preferentially with his left arm, shift over across the top of the bar there to his right arm, eccentrically release it. At the bottom of the throw, <laughs> he shifts over, and he pulls up preferentially with his left arm again, and you can see this kind of oval pattern, okay? So maybe have him do four that way, and then he's gonna do four in the opposite direction. 
So I'll give it a shot. And I've actually, again, I've given them, I've taken a, put another uh, plate of, of assistance for them so it's not too hard. So first I'm going to have Juan hang. And then I'm going to have him shift his body over and he's going to pull up and then he's coming across for me. And then you're going to come on down, Juan. You can see my hands inscribed an oval. Shift left, come up. At the top, shift right, and that's two. Come on over, and that's three. Okay, I'm gonna hang. Okay, reverse that, my friend. Shift right, pull up preferentially. Come on across, come on down. Shift right, come on up, come on across. And come on down, come on up, shift across. So we're really making all the fibers, one more one for me. So we're making all the fibers of his body work in ways that they really haven't ever worked before, have they? Uh, and it's kind of a crazy way to get strong, and it's going to make you kind of that kind of mule country strong uh, as we're getting stronger and stronger in our red routines. Okay, folks, again, we're doing quick elastic push-ups, and um, Juan was strong enough to actually do it in our four square, so, you know, good for you, my friend, but he's just going to kind of find that really powerful range, and again, we're, we're not going, I can feel my pec just pop out right there, so that's my springy range, and maybe it's in the, you know, middle part of the, of the, of your entire stroke, or maybe it's in the top part of it, but, but the idea, folks, is I want to upregulate and boom, boom, I want to be able to uh, produce force, velocity, and power out of that pec muscle because we're going to be going into the orange routines, which produce power, so now we're getting prepared for it. And I just want, in a lot of our sports, you know, it's not like I'm doing a 500-pound bench press. I'm actually throwing a spear. I'm throwing a ball. I'm doing a tennis ball, something like that. And so that takes a different type of training in the muscle. And so here we are, we're gonna train that elastics, we're gonna see one, kind of just find a real kind of cool potential. And if you can do 12 slow push-ups or whatever, I mean, he might be able to do about 25 of these. Let's see, let's see how he can do. And just, so spring, so quick, quick one, just find that spring, 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 spring. And it's quick, and it's quick, and it's quick. And you, you, you know, keep that range a little shorter if he needs to. And then pretty soon, uh, those muscles are going to kind of lock up on him because he's producing so much byproduct here. Good. We do 10 more. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good job. And if I had him go really slow all the way down and really slow all the way up, that would be the opposite of what we, of what we just demonstrated. Okay, so one, do me a favor, let's just do that. Let's go really slow down. So now we're kind of combining this with an eccentric pattern. This is for strength. So if he's going down for real slow, remember those folks? You know, and then he's gonna come on back. And again, I like his, his head being a little more back here. Again, he's a little animal at the watering hole. So we can see that one, and go full range for me, pal, go all the way down, all the way up. So you can see now we've taken the world from our elastic fascial potential, we put it back into our muscle and strength, and that was really hard, right? Yeah. So we saw how many he did with the elastic potential, and we saw when you put it back into the strength world, how that really radically changes. So that's the appreciation that I want you guys to have out there. Oval tensegrity push-ups. Well, we saw Juan do these oval patterns in the pull-ups, didn't we? And now I'm going to have him do an oval pattern here. So he's going to get into his push-up position. And so Juan's going to, again, he's going to shift over uh, into his left arm. And he's going to preferentially lower his body through his left arm. 
When he gets down to depth, he's going to shift over, and these are slow and really deliberate, folks. Now he's going to preferentially push up with his right arm. He's going to shift over to his left arm. He's going to come on down. He's going to shift over. He's going to come on up, shift over, and this is what, three and one, right? He's going to shift over, and maybe we'll do four. We'll do four each direction. Come, have him go right through center. Now he's going to shift over to the right. He's going to go on down. And I can feel the heat coming out of his body. He's really working here. He's coming out, down, shift over, and up. We can hear him breathing now. He's working. It's almost maximal load, isn't it, Juan? Yep. And one more pal, shift over to the right, lower down preferentially. So now we get, we get this great eccentric training, and we get great, uh, well, actually elastic training too with our tensegrity as we get these oval patterns. So that's it, folks. Thank you, Juan, for helping us out today. Good job.